Hey guys, this yellow powder is an ionic compound of potassium and oxygen called potassium superoxide. It's a highly reactive substance, and one of its most interesting properties is that it reacts directly with ozone, forming unstable red potassium ozonide. After about 5 seconds, ozone begins to come out of a glass tube and the potassium superoxide instantly turns red as it reacts. Over time, the red color becomes even more saturated, which may indicate an increase in the concentration of ozonide. However, much of the original potassium superoxide remains, since the reaction doesn't go to completion under these conditions. For the next experiment, I wanted to concentrate ozone on potassium superoxide, so I used a dual test tube. I simply poured some potassium superoxide into the tube and added liquid azonated oxygen. Since the dual tube acts like a thermos, and oxygen boils at a much lower temperature than ozone, the oxygen boils off first leaving nearly pure ozone behind. But instead of reacting calmly with potassium superoxide, the liquid ozone exploded, which is in fact typical behavior for liquid ozone. Here is another demonstration. See how the yellow potassium superoxide turns red when added to a flask filled with ozone. At room temperature, especially in humid air, potassium ozonide degrades quickly, it loses its red color in less than 2 minutes. However, since the ozonide obtained through direct ozone treatment contains some unreacted potassium superoxide, it retains properties of both compounds. For instance, potassium ozonide immediately forms fireballs when it comes into contact with phosphorus pentachloride. A similar reaction occurs with pure potassium superoxide, but it happens much more slowly. It also ignites on contact with nitromethane, just like potassium superoxide does. Unlike potassium superoxide, which is insoluble in liquid ammonia, potassium ozonide dissolves quite well – about 15 grams per 100 grams of liquid ammonia at minus 35 degrees Celsius. So, if I pour liquid ammonia into a test tube and add a bit of potassium ozonide, the solution immediately turns a deep red, while the unreacted potassium superoxide settles out as a solid. This next test tube contains benzene, and now I'm adding some potassium permanganate to it. As you can see, nothing happens. That's because potassium permanganate is a polar ionic compound, while benzene is a non-polar solvent. The permanganate simply sinks without dissolving or reacting. However, we can make it dissolve in benzene using a special compound called 18 crown 6. This organic compound, which looks like transparent crystals, is a crown ether, a cyclic ether with six oxygen atoms arranged symmetrically. Crown ethers like this one allow us to dissolve potassium salts in non-polar solvents, such as a benzene. It dissolves easily in benzene and can form complexes with potassium ions, capturing them inside its ring. This results in an ion pair that's soluble in benzene. When I mix the contents of a test tube, the benzene takes on the purple color characteristic of potassium permanganate solutions. By the way, this is known as a purple benzene, and it's reactive enough to oxidize toluene into benzoic acid. And we can observe something similar with potassium ozonide. Normally, potassium ozonide doesn't dissolve in benzene, 
but with a few crystals of crown ether, it becomes soluble, turning the benzene deep red, the typical color of ozonide solutions. Using this method, ozonizing potassium superoxide without extraction into liquid ammonia, you can obtain potassium ozonide with a concentration of up to 20%. But if you use difluorodichloromethane, which liquefies at minus 30 degrees Celsius, you can boost the concentration of potassium ozonide up to 80%. This liquefied gas is one of the best solvents for ozone. When ozone is bubbled through it, the solution gradually turns blue. The intensity of the color depends on the amount of dissolved ozone. Now I'll add potassium superoxide to the solution. It immediately changes from yellow to red, and over time the red becomes more saturated, indicating the formation of potassium ozonide. Once the reaction finishes, the blue solution turns clear, and we can see that potassium superoxide has turned into red potassium ozonide. I also cooled liquid ammonia in a Dewar tube and introduced ozone into it. Let's see what happens. As soon as the ozone enters the tube, the ammonia turns orange, then quickly shifts to red as more ozone flows in the characteristic color of ozonides. In this case, we form ammonium ozonide. Ammonium ozonide, like alkali metal ozonides, is a red solid. According to Wikipedia, it remains stable at low temperatures, but decomposes into ammonium nitrate at temperatures above minus 70 degrees Celsius. Interestingly, as the temperature rises and the red color fades, a bluish tint begins to appear. What do you think this could be? A solution nitrogen oxides in ammonia or something else? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you found it interesting to learn about this unusual class of compounds, ozonides, and see how they form and behave. Don't forget to like and leave a comment if you enjoyed the video, and if you'd like to support the channel, consider joining my Patreon, just like some of the amazing viewers already have. Your support really helps me keep making these videos. Thanks for watching, see you in the next video.